Anin Buju Nindawe Magani Duk, Amekindigo Anishanabe Mang Gitash Kalindijnaka, Jaganashi Mang, Makwa Nindulem, Nisqua Game with Zaganini Nindundiba, Itashka Kabakanga Nain the Nungum, Minoa, Niminwenda Mayawa Nimanungum. So I said, Hello, how are you, my relatives? Um, I'm Anishinaabe from Red Lake, Minnesota, but I currently live in Minneapolis. I, or my English name is Kayla, and my Anishinaabe name is Amik, um, and I'm very happy to be here. I am a junior at Dartmouth College. I'm studying Native American Studies and Linguistics with a focus on language revitalization, specifically indigenous language revitalization. I've been dancing ever since I could walk. I literally have a picture in my room. It's my most prized possession of me, my mom, my grandma, and my great-grandmother all standing together, and I'm just like a little girl in a jingle dress. So the dance is about healing, and it's about um, protecting your, your strength, your ability, and it also represents the power that women have and the strength that they have. Um, when you dance, you're supposed to dance very gracefully and light on your feet with like very strong posture and you're just a strong but delicate force. Um, and not that del women are delicate, but in a like a beautiful way. It's, it's not to say that they have a different role or place in Anishinaabe lifestyle. It's just that they are so powerful and in their power they are beautiful. Um, the dance has evolved, like I said, and it's become more contemporary and spread to other tribes. And now dresses are very colorful and you'll see lots of designs on them. Um, and you'll see a lot of footwork, a lot of different crazy footwork. Um, cool moves. The protocol for dancing traditional is that you can't have more than one foot leave the ground at a time. And you have to dance in kind of like a, kind of like a snake like pattern going back and forth. Um, and you slide your feet more. Whereas dancing contemporary, it's a lot of, you know, moves and now we have fans and you can wear feathers in your hair, which was reserved for the men back in the day. Everything that I wear, I've made, and I've put a lot of time into it. Um, this dress that I actually just finished for this year's Dartmouth Pow Wow was um, a dress I've been meaning to make for a long time. My, or my namesake, the person who gave me my name, he told me before I left for Dartmouth that I needed to make a green, a light green metallic colored dress um, with Ojibwe floral designs on it. And he said that I would know, or I would know what color it was when I saw it in the store. And so I've been looking, I've been trying to keep my eye out, but it was only recently, through almost three years later, that I actually found the right color. Um, it's a lot different than most of the dresses I've made. I try to, um, well, in this this one here, you can see it's a contemporary. It's a very colorful, and this one actually over here, it has the um, the designs of a traditional dress, but the colors are more contemporary. Um, there's supposed to be 365 jingles on the dress, um, which this one does. A lot of them, the old ones used to have jingles on the sleeves too. It's really cool looking back at all the old pictures of like, even in not that long ago, like the 60s and 70s, people still wore a lot more traditional dresses. And when I came to the Hood Museum and asked if I could see if, or first I asked if they even had any Ojibwe beadwork or art, and in my head, I was kind of doubting that they would, um, just because I, I wasn't quite sure at that moment what classified Ojibwe art. Um, to me, these are things I grew up with and that have been a part of my life since I can remember. And they were just something that you do, not something that, oh, I'm gonna go paint a picture today, you know, something that's clearly defined as art. This is something to me that was just a part of my life. And when she pulled open the drawer, there's about, I can't even remember, like maybe five or six, maybe a couple more, a couple less, um, beautifully beaded Ojibwe style bags. My mouth just dropped. Um, and like in that moment, I realized that everything we do and everything that we are teaching girls here through the Native Dancing Society and dancing and making their own regalia, that is art and it is beautiful. Um, 
and it's something that's so closely a part of my identity it's so it's so much a part of me that the dance itself is art um so it's really it's really cool because this is a realization i've just recently had and i admire all of the work that other people do this painting is actually um I looked at it and it was so bright and fun, you know, like I'm smiling in this picture and I'm like goofing around and having a good time. Um, but to me that is what dancing is, it's, it's something that you have fun doing. And it was really interesting looking at the other pieces in this collection because a lot of the other ones are more serious and they're very, they're very much like here I am, like I'm beautiful and strong, like what I was saying you know, the dance represents, but also like here I'm, I'm like happy, I'm laughing, I'm having a good time. Like to me, this is what dancing is for me. And this is what making all this regalia is for me. It's, it's fun, it's, but it's also beautiful and strong at the same time, if that's possible, you know? It's just like those other pictures, I thought it was really cool because they really embody what those dances represent and what um, it means to be a native person, but for here, I feel like, or for this one, I felt like it was more about like how I see the dance, not how others view the dance. Um, and so I was really excited <laughs> when I saw it. I was given a poem when I was younger um, from a cousin, I believe, about dancing. And I, don't, I can't remember it fully, but I'll say a little bit of what I do remember from it because I think it really, or like parts of it, because it really embodies to like how I've grown up um, appreciating the dance. And I always tell, I'm the, one of the co-leaders for the Native Dancing Society, and I always share this poem with them within the first couple weeks of dancing so that they know where I'm coming from about the dance and also it leaves them room for interpretation um, because it is something that's supposed to be fun but it's also something that should be respected because it's a gift to us. Um, so it goes something like, hear me dance for Mother Earth with ever step a prayer. I dance for those who cannot dance to let them know I care. See me move, I give you this, accept my sacred gift. And there's another part and then it goes, I dance for those who feelings hurt yet still refuse to cry. I dance for those, um, I dance for those whose, wait, 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 I know, this is my favorite line. I dance for those whose feelings hurt yet still re refuse to cry. I dance for those who are struggling, help lift their heads up high. I dance for my relatives, and that goes on and on and on and on. But anyways, like those are, those like really made me think about what dancing and like making beadwork is and like everything I do and sharing with others what I know and um, teaching other people how to dance. It's, you know, it's not just us dancing and our beadwork and our dress and the songs that go along with them. They are beautiful and everything, but they are gifts to us and they're gifts to us for a reason because through it we help others. And um, whether it be, you know, giving a gift of beadwork is really honorable to somebody or teaching someone to dance and, you know, seeing how they progress in life and how they interpret it. It's all a gift.